Can you hear me? Hi. Yes, All right, please, are you with me? Yes, Okay. Sir. No, uh, can I get the first lesson? Aha. Uh -huh. All right, so anybody working in community, one of the communities in Ghana, a chief zone, kindly put up your hands and share with us. Oh. So you mind me. So we don't have anybody working in the chip zone. Oh, I should mention names today. All right. So I have the first person. Remember, class contribution also go for a mark. Okay, Lucy. Hello, sister. Good morning. Good morning, dear. How are you? I'm doing good. Okay, so Sister, please. currently I'm not working at the chip compound, but I've All worked right. there before. Okay, so share your experience with us. Okay, it was uh, two communities uh, at the Inzima area, Western region. And then one was a fishing community and the other two was uh, farming. And my experience was like, for them, they don't know that if closed from work, any time at point, they feel like they are not feeling well, they will come. Whether at dawn, uh, afternoon, evening, immediately you close from work and then you remove your uniform. They'll be knocking at your door. So you have to return back to the clinic and take care of them. So it's and then it's different from you working at the uh, hospital. When you close, you've closed. So that was what I learned about them or the chip compound. And then for okay, major so let me ask. Mm, all right. Oh, we are with you. Continue, please. Uh -huh. And then the area to we, we treat minor cases and then refer major cases to the hospital. And then we, most of the home visit is done there. Sometimes there are some treatments you make and they will ask you, come home for your money. So you have to visit them for your money. And also some people too will not come to the clinic to deliver. They will sit at their houses and they will deliver hope. So you have to pay a visit to them, <laughs> whether they delivered or not. So the home visit is more, is very, very if you don't do that, you lose all your clients. Uh-huh. Sister. Okay. So you said it was, what was that, uh, the occupation? Farming and then fishing. Though they are all closer to the, they are all closer to the seashore, but one was doing farming and the other was fishing. All right. So what was your experience during that season? I know there is a season for the farming and then there was a season for the fishing. So what was your experience concerning like maternity, the number of deliveries, your attendance at the antenatal clinic? So when the season of farming arises, you lose most of your clients. They won't come. In fact, they will go to their, when you ask them, oh, madam, make I don't know. I don't know. I don't know whether we have Nigeria students or we have other students <laughs> with us who don't understand Chi. <laughs> so can you use the English language to help everybody? Okay. Like when it gets to the fishing or the farming season, the number of uh, uh, clients or patients attending the clinic. It goes down because 
They are saying it's their main capital of living. So if they don't go, they won't get anything to eat or to even visit the hospital. So they don't come. The number reduces. All right. Thank you very much. I like. I wanted to pick a point from there, and then you, you were also saying a home delivery, and then you are also talking about relating it to the activity yeah. during the season. Uh -huh. So that one is very very important. Okay, thank you very much for sharing with with us. Can we get a different person? Anybody who has worked in the church zone, any of the properties. Okay, so I have the second person, Janet Mensa. Jane. Right. Please anybody to share with us. Have you ever worked in the cheap zone or a community, one of the communities in Ghana? Share your experience with us. Because we Hello, sister. All right. Sis and uh, Janet, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, dear. How are you? I'm doing good. All right. I worked in a trip compound in the northern region. Okay. Yeah, it was really a demarcated trip compound. So we really worked with the people in their homes. I conducted antenatal <laughs> clinics in their rooms. Wow. I normally go for home visits in their rooms and mm -hmm. conduct the antenatal in the house. So, so I that go is with purely domiciliary midwifery. You were doing purely domiciliary midwifery there. Yes, please. I was All right. administering their cars in the house, giving them mm -hmm. tetanus, running their HB, doing palpation, everything in their own rooms. So I'll give them the next visit and create a pregnancy diary for them. When the time is due, you know, when the, I create the pregnancy diary, maybe mm. I attended to the person in January. So mm. by the time I flip up to uh, September, the person's due date will be closer. So I'll visit mm. the person in the house again. Sometimes you go and maybe the person has experienced lightning or something. So I'll be monitoring them day by day. When I close from work, I'll go to their houses and check. So in the night, they'll come and call you that the person was in labor. And I really collaborated with the TBAs in the communities. So they were my aide. So the TBA will let somebody come and call me. We will go to the person's house and deliver the person. If the labor has not progressed, we will bring the person to the chip compound itself where we had the things and we will deliver the person, take care of the person. Or if the person had delivered in the room before I get there, I will continue with the postnatal and early morning, we will go and administer the BCG for them. So we were working hand in hand. Santa has to go for home visits in their farms. I will chase them in their farm because it was purely <clears throat> a, a typical village. You wouldn't find anybody. So sometimes when, because I knew them, I knew where their farmlands were. So with the help wow. of the volunteers, they will take me to their farmland. I will administer their SB and all those things for them. So I was really uh, taking care of them hand in hand. Like I will meet them in their rooms and do everything for them, deliver them and take care of them. So their babies are five years and I will discharge them. Okay. So where are you working now? At Francho Polyclinic. Okay, so you have moved from the chief zone. Yes, please. All right. So what do you have any challenge? Do you face any challenge with the TBS? No, they were really doing well because of the motivation. You know, we worked with some NGOs, so we were delivering them for free. So we had a collaboration with the TBS. Any delivery that I will conduct, whatever the mother will take like will take to the hospital like soaps and dental and other monies will be given to the TBS. So they were really motivated by that action because if I deliver somebody, that woman will take some soap, dental and other things to the TBA and give them money on top. We were giving them 10, 10 CD on top too. So because of that motivation, even if the person had in perineum, they will carry the person 
and make sure that I deliver the person so that they will also have their incentive. Okay. So that is very, very good, Janet. It's a, a very good example. Um, God bless you. I've done well. And I think such a community to carry out a research will, will be very, very easy for you. Very, very. I think you can pick a research topic from there. In fact, so why did you leave? My husband and I have to, re we have to relocate. I moved based on marital grounds. Okay, so do you visit them from time to time? What is happening there now? Honestly, when I left, I have never had the time to go there. Oh. Yeah. So it was you, very far. Mm -hmm. 10 hours mm -hmm. drive from Kumasi. Wow. So do we? Do they have a new midwife? Did you coach the new midwife? Yes, please. And do you communicate with the midwife? Sometimes. Please try and do it. It's easy. And that is all what the domiciliary midwifery is about. Okay, so please communicate with the midwife so that maybe you can also start. You see, it's not easy. The community yeah. midwifery or domiciliary midwifery, it involves a lot of sacrifice. Yeah. Hmm, it involves a lot of sacrifice. Okay, thank you very much. There was thank another hands up. There was another ha hands up. Please, there was another hands up to share the experience with us. I think I'll pick, I'll pick two people and then we will start the activity of the day. Share with us. We are doing domiciliary midwifery, community midwifery. Please, anyone, anyone who has worked in the chief zone before, a uh, community before, to share the experience with us. There was somebody hands was up, but I can't find the hands again. Something, something, Aduma. Okay. Hello, those in the church, those who are still sleeping, please wake, wake and share your experience with us. Have you ever worked in the cheap zone or any health center in Ghana? Share your experience with us. So please, apart from our two sisters, we are all working in the district hospitals and then the teaching hospitals. We don't have anybody to share with us. Or is it that we don't want to accept posting to the tip zooms? Hello. Okay, so I think I'll pick the last person. Vic. <laughs> Hello, Vic. Sister. Savannah, you want to talk? Yes, yeah, sister. Sister, good morning. Good morning. Okay, pick, we will pick you after Savannah. Yes, dear. Good morning. I've worked at uh, Upper Dentra East, a typical village called Oponso. That was okay. my first. Where, when a car goes there, you will never get a car back. That's the end of the road. The car turned <coughs> from there. It doesn't continue. The road doesn't continue again. It was my first station. There was no electricity no network. And if before you get someone, you get connected to someone, you have to climb a tree before you can make a call. And it was very tough as a beginner. I suffered a lot and I was single at that time. So you'll be there and the cocoa farmers and the cocoa farmers, they will come and be proposing to you. <laughs> and it was very difficult. You leave your tents and you leave the clinic. By the time you come, the thing may not be there. So I, I suffered a lot. You will be their doctor, their nurse. They, you will be their counselor. At the same time, the philanthropist. Sometimes someone will come and deliver, and you have to give the person a cloth and feed the person too. So it wasn't easy. Going outreach, you have to walk 
<clears throat> you have to work for a long distance in a, a farmland, cocoa farm. Then by the time you read the place, eh, all your sandals or your shoe will turn will turn off. <clears throat> it wasn't easy. So working at a village, I worked there for four or five years before I left to school. So my, that was my experience. It was very difficult for us, but with God's grace, we were able to manage. Thank you, sister. Okay. So where, where are you working now? Or you're on steady leave? No. Uh, I'm now working at uh, the hospital. Okay. I've left the place. So you, I'm now you, don't, you, are, you are not planning of going back to the place again? Oh, uh, the, 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 our sister should, uh, others too should go and also have an experience. So um, and the family too, because of my family, I can't leave my family and go to the village back. Mm, okay, all right. You have served Mother Ghana, so others to continue. All right. So let's meet the last person, Vic. Mister Vic, will you are you with us? Victoria. Hello, Esther. Okay. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Um, please. Currently, I'm still working there, but it has been promoted to a polyclinic. Okay. And uh, it's Wulensi in the north. I was actually posted there around 27. And like most of the I said were the same thing. The road was bad. And if you go Unless the next day, even if I come and unless the next day, you will not get a car back to the place. So as at the time when we went there, um, they are basic farmers. Then Wulensi is in the middle, which comprises of Dagumbes, and then the surrounding communities were Konkombes. And um, the historians will always tell us that those two tribes, they are not in terms like that. So sometimes even the antenatal sections, I have to group them. The Dagombes will come today, the Concombes will come tomorrow. Because if they come together, something, somebody can say something and it will spike some war and other things in the community. But then by the grace of God, with the collaboration of the TBs, like my sister said, um, because of the incentives, when someone is in labor, they will bring the person to the facility. And there were times in the community also gave a warning that nobody should deliver in the house. If you deliver in the house, you'll be fined. So because of that, even if the person deliver in the house, they will put the baby, the placenta, everything in a basin and carry it to the facility for me to continue with my services. There are times when they come post later and the health of the baby is bad. I'll have to follow them to their homes every day, do the home visiting and other things until we see improvement in the health of the babies. When I got there, they were using um, filthy rags, as my word, but when they bring the rags to deliver, that is what you will use as, they call it amoshi. So, you do the amoshi for them and they will use it as pad. But with time, we were introducing the pad. When a person comes, you can pick three of the pads and then you give it to them. And then as it stands now, now they have understood it and they normally come to the facility with pads and some of the demats. So there has been a total change. There were times you have to pay for their labs, even their drugs have to feed them but to the grace of god now there are some changes some will even be in labor run to the farm to go and deliver there and by the time they will bring a massive tear sometimes the person will even bleed for days and will need transfusion which you have to suture the tear and then refer to a higher facility for them to transfuse 
So that is the little experience. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think we have been able to get a lot of people to join us. And there was last person hands up. If I don't pick it, that me, I'm not sure. Uh, what was the name? I saw the name Addo, something, something Addo. The hands was up. Is it? I saw the name. Is it Addo? Something. Please, the person that your hands was up. Please, can you come back? All right. All right, so thank you, my sisters, for sharing with us. I think we can start the class. So we are going back. Please, are you receiving the screen at your end? Yes, sister. Yes. Okay. All right. Please save your name with your index number. Remember, class contribution is very, very important for you to get your one mark. Okay. All right, so community midwifery or domiciliary midwifery. Community midwifery or domiciliary midwifery. So today I'll be your host for community midwifery or domiciliary midwifery. Okay, now if you look at the first page, somebody says, that, why, why do you have a calculator besides your slide? It means in this community midwifery, we are going to do a lot of calculation. And then the calculation that we are going to do, we are not just going to calculate figures and then leave it there like that, no. We are going to calculate figures and then we are going to relate it to our workplace, our field in midwifery and we are going to apply there. Okay, so we are going to do a lot of calculation in this community midwifery. We are going to do the calculation, then we will apply it. And when we apply it in our workplace, we will be given an assignment to go and do it in our facilities. So we are going to do a lot of application so please, my sister, that is why I wanted a lot of us to join us before I start the class. And we all know some of the midwives, they don't like calculation, but we cannot do away with calculation as midwife because we deal with statistics. And when we started the class, our sisters shared their experience with us. However, I always say that if you share your experience by verba, I remember last year, one guy also shared the experience with me and he has to even send me videos. He sent me a lot of videos on my phone. I think the guy, I don't know, has she completed something like that when we're doing community media free. She shared the experience, sent me videos and pictures of where she's working. And he told me, Sister Boy, am I doing the rain season? My, my community is cut off from any other community. And when it is uh, when I have a, 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 a problem like somebody with PPH, getting a boot or crossing over to send a person is not easy for me. And there is no light there for you to even make a call. So we are always saying that when we back our complaints with, it's not with research, or we back it with statistics. Figures, they will understand better than you going for a workshop and I don't have nobody who mind you. But when we put it into writing and we back it with research or we back it with figures, they will understand better. So in this community midwifery that we are going to do, we are going to do something more different from 
what we did in our diploma level. So please try and join the class on time. So that you, by the time you, you join, we are in the middle. I know some of us has a network challenge, but please try and join the class on time because we are going to do a lot of discussion. We are going to do a lot of calculations and we're going to relate it to our work. And then we'll be given an assignment to go and apply in our workplace. So this community midwifery free that we are going to do or the domiciliary midwifery free that we are going to do it's a little bit different from what we did in our diploma level. So please inform your friends to join the class. And then we will start at the same time. So we have, let's look at the course outline. So I have an image showing a typical community in Ghana. Course objective. By the end of this course, you should be able to describe factors that influence population growth. And when you are describing your factors, you need to back it with figures. But because you cannot go for a workshop and then you say that, oh, in my community, People are living five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in the community. And so, as for me, family planning services, they are not utilizing family planning services. No. When you are going, either you go with a research, and the research that you even go with, you go with figures, or you go with figures in a writing form so that they will understand better. So by the end of this course, number two, you should be able to discuss maternal and infant mobility and their mortality. So we are going to calculate maternal mortality, infant neonates, perinatal mortality, and then we will lay the figures to our workplace. So a time will come, you'll be given an assignment to go and calculate the infant or maternal mortality in your workplace for us. Then we will, we will also calculate. Please, somebody said the slide is not moving. Yes, yes, yes it's not moving. What do you have there? The community with the children killing. All right, hold on. Please, do you have it now? No, please. Uh, yes. yes now. Abby, do you have it now? Yes, sister. Yes, sister. No, sister. It has come now. Are you having the course objective? Yes, sister. Somebody say no, please. Are you all having the course objective by the end of the course? Yes, sister. Yes, sister. Yes, sister. Okay. Yes, all right, thank sister. you. All right, all right. It's better now. Okay. All right, so... Okay, so I think I was on the course objective, point number two, that by the end of this course, you should be able to discuss maternal and infant mortality and mobility. But we said in this discussion, we are not just going to discuss and leave it there. We need to back our discussion with figures. So we are going to do a lot of calculations there. We are going to calculate infant mortality and then maternal mortality and then mobility. That is the incidence rate and the prevalence rate. 
then you should be able to explain private hospital and maternity home act. Most of us want to open a maternity home. Okay, so when I go to the point, then you have to, to explain nursing and midwifery council, then discuss domiciliary midwifery, which <clears throat> we discussed this morning. Then you should be able to describe the role of the community health officer. Who is the community health officer or midwife? Then we also look at the role of the TVs. Okay, so I've moved to the next slide, course content. Please, are you having the, that one? Is it moving now? Course content. Yes, 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 yes. All right. So let's look at the course content. In fact, we have a lot of things to do. So we look at reproductive health. First of all, we know what is a community, what goes into the community, and then what is a reproductive health. So we will talk about reproductive health in Ghana. Then we look at one factor that influence population growth in your community, in your district. So here we are going to calculate, we will look at fertility and we calculate fertility rates, age fertility rates. And then when we calculate, we are going to relate it to where we are working. How fertile are people in that community? And then how does the fertility affect the population growth? And how does the population growth affect our work as midwives? And then what we are doing about it to control the population growth. So the fertility, we will do a lot of calculation there. That is why we even calculate teenage pregnancy rates, abortion rates. So when we, we any time that we do the calculation, you'll be given an assignment to go and then calculate from your facility for us. And we'll be calculating age interval, fertility rates. Then at the end, we'll look at the total fertility rates in a community. Then we relate the figures to our district, our hospital, or the community that we are working in. If we're working in the hospital, you calculate from your hospital. Then you tell us the fertility rates in your district or the hospital that you are working, the community or, uh, for example, if we're working in Menshia, then you, you tell us the fertility rate around Menshia. Okay. So that is what we are going to do. So that is why I said the community midwifery, we are going to do something higher than what we did in our diploma level. Okay, so it's very important to attend lectures. All right. Then from there, we we'll look at another factor that's influence population growth. That is mortality. Mortality. Mothers are dying during labor. What are we going to do as midwives? Maternal mortality, infant mortality, neonatal mortality. Everywhere you go, we are talking about mortality rates. We will look at what is mortality and how does it even affect population growth? Then what is the role of the midwife? when we talk about mortality. Like when our sisters were sharing their experience with us, most of us don't want to even go and work in the communities. 
others when you are being posted there we we go in for change so here mortality we are going to calculate death rates and then birth rates then we look at how it influences population growth and then we will calculate maternal mortality rates we cannot just leave it there like that. Then everybody is going to calculate for me. So if I'm done teaching today, you go and calculate the maternal mortality rate in your facility. Maybe for example, in 2020 or 2021 or 2022, then you tell me the way forward. What did you put in place to prevent the maternal mortality? Then we look at infants, when we are done with the mortality, maternal mortality, we look at the direct cause and an indirect cause of maternal mortality. And the role of the midwife, we have a role to play to stop maternal, uh, maternal mortality. So what are we doing about it as midwives? Sometimes we go to meeting and we talk maternal mortality in my facility. I have two people dying when they came in labor. I have this and they are dying, they are dying. But you back it with figures. You cannot just go and say, they are not dying. As for me, oh, they are not dying. They are not dying. Me, why they are dying? Sometimes you come and you see this woman who, by all means, this woman will not survive. And then the only thing that you have to do is to refer. So at the end, the maternal mortality in one facility is more than the other. So we will look at it. All hands on deck. The woman life can be safe if we are together. And that is what community midwifery or domiciliary midwifery is about. We need to understand our sisters who are working in the chief zone. Some of us, we have never worked there. I have worked in the chief zone before, so I know. Well, I have worked in the community before, so I know. But sometimes some of our sisters, you are lucky just posting you are working in the teaching hospital or you are working in the district hospital or regional hospital you have never been in any of the communities in ghana here where the car will go once and will not go again and then you have your sister there they'll refer case to you and you'll be tossing them up and down and hey, where is the card why didn't you do this why didn't you check the effigy why didn't you set the line? You don't know anything. And you are working in the community. Well, look at this. Please, if you have been there before, you understand them and you feel for them. So we will be doing a lot of discussion so that those of us who haven't worked there before, from today going, when they bring their cases, we will help them out. Sometimes they will bring their cases and nobody is attending to them. And I don't know. I remember when I was in the workplace, you, we have to go and visit. Do we even visit our sisters? We have to go and visit them. We have to cross rivers and then we will get there. And when we get there, the midwife that, oh, the midwife was so happy. Oh, sister, so me too, you have remembered me to come and visit me. They are going through a lot. So we will have a feeling. So the next time when they bring their cases, we will run to help them. And we'll not be asking them questions. Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Why are you now bringing the case? And even sometimes transportation to bring the case to the district hospital is a problem. Somebody hands this up. Deborah. Yes, Debbie. Sister. Sister. Good morning. Good morning. Sister, I raised my hand because of what you said. Up to now, okay. I'm hurt. I delivered the prime. I mean, I'm at the chip zone. Then after delivery, she had PPH. I checked uh, HB and it was 5.3. I ran infusion, then we took a car. From where the facility is to, my, uh, to the referral place is one hour, 30 minutes. This I referred the case to the referral point. I don't mention the hospital name. Mm. Yes, sister. Okay. I, I, we got there and... Uh, that when the, the girl when she stand up and she walks, or see me, so 
I have to hold the lady. We go there and I call the midwife. Oh, she should come and assist me. So that we carry the patient to the bed. Sister, come and see how this lady was behaving. In fact, I was so angry. I said, no, control yourself. Control yourself. I controlled myself. Then I sent the patient to the bed. To the bed. Sister, for even she should come and assist me so that we send the bed. She didn't too. She didn't. So I have to just say, me who the may come to. I called uh, a, 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 other relatives who were over there, whose clients, their, their other clients' relatives to come and assist me. Then I send the patient to the bed. And they had working. I don't know what soldier primate. I don't know. A, a whole lot of nasty questions, sister. In fact, I kept quiet. I wanted, her to, I wanted to report her to the internet. I said no. So I've decided henceforth, when I get a case, I will not refer the patient. When I ref, I'm not referring the patient to that facility. We have other facilities over there. I would rather prefer sending the client to the other facility than the one that I sent the patient to that last time. Thank you. And it was only one person, one midwife who is doing that, isn't it? Yes, sister. So I think that is why we are doing this course. When we are, that's why I say at the end, we will know what to do. We, you should not just let it go like that because if we let it go like that, it will continue and maternal mortality, you know. You see, when we go for workshop and they mention maternal mortality, it starts from somewhere, the three delays, we will talk about them and the role that we have to play. Okay, so when we are done that midwife, we will not just let her go, no. She will go and face her attitude. If not, hmm, if we don't start from somewhere, there is no way this maternal mortality we can control it, my sister. There is no way we can stop people from dying. So we will look at maternal mortality. And remember, we are going to calculate maternal mortality ratio. Then we'll calculate maternal mortality rates. We'll look at the difference between people who confuse themselves, maternal mortality rates, maternal mortality ratio. We'll look at the difference. And then we'll look at the role that we need to play. We'll go back to our facility and we'll go ahead and apply it there. So we'll go from there. We'll talk about late maternal death, pregnancy-related death, Then we look at the main cause of maternal mortality now. Because I know now the chart has changed. So we we'll look at it and then we will discuss. Then we will help each other. Now we relate it to the Millennium Development Goal, which we are not able to achieve. And now we are having the SDGs. So we will talk about the SDGs. It's like when you pick one heading, there are so many subheadings, but we will make it through. Then we look at how do we prevent maternal mortality? Then we talk about migration. Somebody will say, oh, sister, what am I doing with? Another most important thing. Remember, like I said, the, maternity, uh, the mortality, we'll talk about the neonates. The infant, there are a lot of things I can't talk about. So when we start, we will do all of them. And then we'll talk about migration. People moving in and out of your community or people moving in and out from your districts or your hospital. And this, that we are, we are going to talk about. The screen is not sharing again. Please, I haven't moved to the next, so I'm still explaining the course contents where we have the reproductive health. <clears throat> I have not moved. Okay. So we said, we said, now if we look at, somebody said the audio is off. Is the audio off? No, sister. No, no sister. Stack your network. No, sister. Okay, so, all right. So we will talk about it, and then we will talk about how do people move in and out? How does it affect population growth? So here we are going to cal calculate migration. So that's why one, my sister who shared the experience with us, he said during the rainy season. 
So here, if we are working, we we'll look at the season. We have seasonal migration. How does it affect you? Where you have people moving into your community at that time, increasing your ANC attendance, increasing the number of deliveries. So we will look at it and we are going to relate it to pure midwifery. So we will calculate in migration in, uh, migration in, and then we will look at net migration rate and how it affects our work as midwives. Then we are on the point number two, we talk about fertility rates, mortality rates. Remember in the, we also talk about, I'm going to the next slide, morbidity, very, very important. And if you look at the mobility, Mobility is one of the indirect causes of maternal mortality, the disease condition. Mm. How people are not well or they are not in a good state. Medical complications that set in during pregnancy, labor, and perperium or postpartum. We look at it. Then we will calculate. Mobility rates. Incidence rates. Prevalence rates. And how does it affect our work? So we relate it to antenatal clinic. So when we get there, you'll be given an assignment, for example, go and calculate the incidence rate of PIH in 2023 or uh, sorry 2022 in your facility for me okay and then we are going to look at how the medical conditions how are we going to help prevent or solve them to prevent mothers and babies from dying somebody will say still birth rate somebody will say sister oh babies yes you can't let some people uh, somebody precious baby die like that. No, we are not going to allow that here. We are going to make sure that all babies will be safe because we don't know that baby may become a very important person in future. And every pregnancy is precious to the mother or to the family. So we will look at stillbirth and then we calculate stillbirth rate. Then we look at the type of stillbirth and then we are going to discuss in our facility which of them is more concerned? They are all concerned. The type of stillbirth, they are all concerning the midwives. Forget that we will discuss and then we look at the way forward. And then you'll be given an example to go back to your facility to do the calculation for us. And then you, what did you put in place to prevent it from happening again? So if we look at it, like that's why I said this community midwifery is purely application, something higher than your diploma level. So if we say, oh, sister by my, oh, this is community midwifery, it's not difficult. My sister, we are going to do something. So I won't come to lectures, I won't join lectures. Sister, sister will give me the slide. You won't understand. And then we will continue to do what we have been doing now. That is my problem. When I'm teaching community midwifery, I'm very, very passionate. Because you continue to do the same thing you are doing in your facility. You are going to do that and it's going to hurt us and it is going to increase maternal mortality and morbidity. So please, we, we, we will look at it. And then we look at the way forward, midwives, save life. That is why we are here. We are here to save life, not to lose life. So I think at the end, the calculation, there are many. A time where we will even calculate teenage abortion rates, abortion rates in our facility. And then we look at what we are doing about it. Because if we look at the direct cause of indirect cause of maternal mother, if you look at it, it's also there. On community is 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 very it involves a lot. Let me put it in that way.
So with that is from the calculation, like I said, from the calculation, then we are going to this street speed free. And this is where we will find out that day when we start the class, how many of us, how many of us has a domiciliary bag? How many of us as midwives? We have our domiciliary bags. That is why I said this class is not going to be babarie. No, we are going to do application. We are going to, we are, yeah, 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 let me put it this way. We are going to treat each other. Sorry for speaking, but we are going to treat ourselves the things that we were not doing right. It, it's not like we don't know. We know. But maybe we, we have forgotten, or let me put it this way, we have relaxed. I always say maternal mortality or mobility or stillbirth, everything, it can happen to me. It can happen to you or your sister or your relative or your brother. You see, it's, 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 it's something that a mother dying. Please stop writing on my screen. Ivy. Okay, so please, we are going to do lots. So this fits with free practice. Hey, let me check the time. Okay, I'm still within my time. How many of us are having the scenario back? And even as midwife, when we are going to town, do we have something in our bag that proves that we are midwife? Because anything can happen. A midwife should be alert for action. That is why in the photograph we have alert action. So even that word, alert action, most midwives don't understand. It's on our part of alert action. So anything can happen. You may be in a vehicle, somebody will be in labor, at least your small package bag that you should have one or two things in that small package bag in case you are there. I remember when I was in the workplace, I was having my small, when I'm going to town, my small purse, I have cord clamp. I have cord clamp in it. And I have... Abigail, please do your work for us. Okay. I have cord clamp in it. I have cord scissors. Or sometimes I even put surgical blade. And I was having one surgical gloves. Then I was having cytotech in that small piece. And I was using. Mm -hmm. It's very, very important. Some of us, we think, oh, I'm going to town. I'm going to this i'm going for a wedding anything can happen your small bag and in our house do we have our domiciliary bag because we we know back in the, our diploma level we they talk about the domiciliary bag but how many of us have it in the house in case there is an emergency somebody oh i know a midwife here the person come and call you you are not looking for where is my gloves i put my gloves here where is my core scissors where is this where is the hey, uh -huh. Hey, hey, where are they? This thing? No, it shouldn't be so. And then we should be able to do more. We should be able to do more. Midwifery is not just house to the hospital. Then if you are for the morning duty, you close back to the house. Then you go. So it's from housework, housework. No, midwifery is more than that. Midwifery is more than that. Even we have another role to play when it comes to school health. School health, though the community health nurses are there, but we too can go and give education on abortion. That is why we say when we get there, abortion rates, teenage pregnancy rates, And how does it even affect us? When we go and give education on safe abortion, on safe abortion will be canceled from the courses of 
Ma tena mortality. Then private hospital and maternity home act. Now we 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 are having the health rack. And when you go to GCUC, I think when we are coming for face to face or to write exams, is it on the second floor? Second or third, do they have dental clinic? When you get there, you see the health rack. So we will talk about the private and maternity home at we are midwives. So here we are going to talk about how do we apply what is the rule, what is the regulation, what are we supposed to do when we want to open our maternity home. And I always, when I'm teaching my students, I always tell them that plan towards your maternity home. So what do we need? What are the requirements that we need to open a maternity home? What do we need to open a maternity home? We will look at it. And what is the setup for the maternity home? How do we set up the place for the maternity home? How do we set the place up for a maternity home? So we are going to look at the setup for a maternity home. And then when we, we look at the setup for the maternity home, then we will look at how do we even open a maternity home? Then what is the role of maternity home in preventing maternal mortality and morbidity? Sometimes you may be working in a district and we have, please excuse me for two minutes. All right, so let's, sorry for, uh, let's continue. So sometimes you'll be working in a hospital and there is a maternity home. How do you, uh, like, how do you people link together the maternity home with the hospital? Me, my mom, those in Sunyai, my mom has a very big maternity home in Sunyai. When you go to Sunyai, my mom has a very big maternity home. and. When I go home, my mom always shared the experience with me. Sometimes he would tell me uh, when he's referring cases, the experience that he has been having with other midwives, sometimes he shared with me. If you are working in a place and there is a maternity home, you should be able to work together as one. After all, our aim. bringing life so we have to work hand in hand with each other to save life but sometimes people see the maternity home as a threat they too they have a very special role to play and anytime because i know the benefit of opening a maternity home anytime i'm teaching my students i ask them to start now start now your maternity home Start now, because you cannot work for, for the government forever. You may go on retirement one day. And you go and manage your maternity home. So we look at the maternity home. We need to open a maternity home. How do we open a maternity home? What are the requirements? We look at it. And then what is the act talking about? Then we talk about the nursing and midwifery council. We can't leave them. They are legal backing. There are rules concerning maternity. So who is the current registrar? Then uh, how do we renew our pin? How many of us? So when we get there that day, everybody will show me her pin or his pin. Now we have male midwife, made husbands. Some of you, your pins have expired and you are still practicing. So we look at the legal aspects. Or a pin that is not working. How many of us even know where our pin is? 
And how many of us check it? Because I know now it's every year we have G R N M E. They renew pins and the rest. So we look at our pin. Some of us we don't pay attention. We are more into the practice than looking, look, uh, checking the legal aspects. But anything can happen to us, my sister, midwife. Midwifery is very risky. Anything can happen, and then you need to go to court or you need to bring your pin. You go and pick your pin, and your pin has expired five years ago. So by the end of this course, all of us that our pin has expired, we will go and renew it. And then all, some of us that we don't know where our pins are, we'll go and look for it. Then we'll look at the midwifery and nursing and midwifery council, their rules and regulation. And how does it help us in our practice? So we are going to apply when we get there. Then we talk about the domiciliary midwifery. Even if we are not working there, we have colleagues working there, let's encourage them. But we shouldn't put them away when they come to us. So if we are lucky and we are working in the teaching hospital, we have somebody referring cases to you. Welcome the person. Oh, my sister, you are welcome. Oh, let me help you out. Oh, so how is the place? Then you exchange contacts and you'll be calling the person. Oh, if you have any case, bring the case. We are ready. Then preparation for home delivery. Somebody will say, oh, sister, we're more home delivery this time. You are in there. You are lucky you are in the regional hospital or district or teaching hospital. You are working in big, big hospital. You don't see those things. But when we were our sister, we were sharing the experience. She was doing home delivery. Sometimes even go to the farm to go and conduct delivery day. But you are lucky. Mm -hmm. You are lucky and you don't see those things. So the home deliveries are still there. If nothing at all, you a midwife. Somebody can come and call you from the house. Their head is in vagina. So we will look at preparation for home delivery. And then selection of clients for home delivery. Then home visits. Hmm. My sisters in the district and the regional, regional and uh, uh, what do we call um, teaching hospitals. We have lived the home visits to only the community health nurses. Only the community health nurses do that. How many of us have been doing the home visits? And the home visit is very, very important. That is where when you go, you'll be able to identify conditions and you'll be able to manage. So we, we will go back to our home visit. And by the end of this course, if you are in charge or a nurse manager, or you are a tutor and you are teaching students, you, you have to emphasize more on home visits. You can plan it. Maybe the whole of this week, we have this badge going for home visits. It's possible. Then we look at examination of the baby, examination of the mother, notification and registration of birth. We will look about, about we talk about registration of birth. And this is where we will talk about the old uh, birth sets. And then we will talk about the new biometric birth sets. What is the difference between the two? How do we help the mothers to do the birth sets? And how many days is recommended to do the birth sets? And what is the importance of birth registration on population growth? And then do we notify notification when we are working? And then there is, especially those who work in the chips uh, communities, when we're working and there is a death rate, do you notify? Mm -hmm. Who gives notice that somebody is dead? 
So they should take the person. That is, you see, that is why home visit is very important. When you do the home visit, you'll be able to identify all those who are dead in the house. And then you notify them that this and this. And all those things influence population growth. Statistics, we need them. So notification, we'll talk about notification in Ghana. And we are going to apply it in our hospitals. So we will revisit postnatal clinic visits, immunization and coaching. We'll talk about immunization and coaching. Midwives, have you stopped immunization? At least we have oxytocin. And I know oxytocin is supposed to be in the fridge. So coaching is there. We, would, we, we, we give BCG. I don't know whether you have stopped, but BCG, polio, we were given those days. So we look at immunization and coaching. If you find yourself working in the community, you do all those things. Even in the hospital, you do, you, we give TD. Okay, so we look at, this is where we will calculate here, we have about six calculations. When we get to the immunization and coaching, we are going to calculate catchment area because we need to order vaccines. Even if we are not doing practicing, we are in charges. When we get there, we order vaccines for others to carry it out. So when we get here, we are going to calculate vaccine supply and stock management. We will calculate the wastage factor. Some of the vaccines may go waste. So if we are throwing them away without calculating the wastage factor, the number of vaccines have been doing this. Then we will calculate vaccine. Uh, um, we will calculate vaccine days on our target population. Then we will talk about vaccine that we need based on previous consumption. Then we will calculate vaccine based on the size of the immunization. Sometimes we need to order vaccine. So here, when we get there, we are going to do a lot of calculation. Then we go. We are going to look at. Coaching. So here, coaching, sometimes you go and then the free that we are keeping the vaccine, the same free that is where we are keeping our water and our food. And we'll be opening it every day and then. So we we'll look at how we even monitor coaching using the vaccine monitor. Then from there, we'll talk about the role of the CHO. Who is the CHO? in maternal and unital health. That is the community health officer who can be a midwife or a nurse. Then the TBS. If we're in the teaching hospital, you say, oh, TBS, are they still there? Yes, they are there. So they are role in the community. You, when, that is why when we started this class, I said that my sisters should share their experience with us. The TBS are there. We cannot deal away with them. So we look at the TBS and their role in the community. Then the almighty self motherhood. Mothers should not be coming or mothers should not get pregnant, deliver and then die. No. Save mother, every mother is supposed to be safe. So we revisit save motherhood and we'll talk about the obstetric emergency. And we have two types when we get the basic and then the comprehensive. So we revisit save motherhood and then obstetric emergency. So like I said, my sisters, we have so many things to do. And it is we are going to do something different from a little bit higher, higher than our diploma level. The things that we did not understand in our diploma level, we are going to understand 
better. And that is where the asking ah, will come in. Ah, I remember last semester when I was teaching Gaini. This semester, I couldn't take the Gaini because of one or two things. And then I was talking about the, the Gaini. I was talking about the malformation of the uterus. And then we came to die the difold uterus. Somebody with a double uterus, a double service, and a double vagina or one vagina. Then the person can deliver. And then within some few months, we'll come and deliver again. And then somebody raised up their hand, Sister Boyma, I didn't know. So I had a case like that. The person delivered it, then the next four months he came back and delivered. But because we didn't know, the person went and sit on hot water, applied so many things, and it was a still bed. Ah, uh, if had I know. So the R symbol will come. That is why we are here. We are not only here for the certificates, but we are here for a change. What we were doing. We are going to do it better. And what we were not doing, we will start doing it now. What we were not doing, we will start to do it now. That is what we are going to do. That is what we are going to do. And that is where the ah symbol will come in. All right, so let's look at the plans for the semester. So if we look at the plans, we said one. My slide is not moving. Okay, so teaching methods, we are going to do a lot of, I'm going to do a lot of lecturing because the calculations, I cannot give them out for presentation. So I'll be teaching more. If you look at this class, I will be leading the class about almost 70%. Because some of the calculations are new to us. Some, not all, but most of them are new to us. So I'm going to do a lot of lecturing. And then we'll do a lot of discussion, demonstration, if there is a time group work, group presentation, then group practicals. So the approaches that we are going to use will be student-centered and then teacher-centered. So I will teach, you are going to do more of reading and assignments. So we will divide ourselves and then we'll be giving group assignments. Okay, uh -huh. So this will be our reference material. If we have the Save Motherhood Master's book or any book on midwifery, <clears throat> when we start the class, you are going to apply them. Then we'll be given assessments. We will have assignments go for 10 marks, presentation, 10 marks, mid semester exams, 10 marks, making, 30 marks, okay? So we will be giving a lot of assignments. We'll be doing a lot of presentation. And any time that we will start the class, we'll be giving class exercise. So we will take the marks from there and it go for a mark. Then we'll look at the end of semester exams, which goes for 70 marks. So at the end, we'll be having 100% or 100 and I don't know if, I don't know, I'll ask and find out from the school if it has changed to maybe 40, 60, but if it's still 30, 70, that is how we are going to go about it. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the course content for the domiciliary midwifery. Please, any question? Because I don't want to start the class. I will start the class next week. Next week, we are starting giddy, 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 giddy. 
And please, if you don't have a calculator, please get your calculator by you and your exercise because we'll be doing a lot of exercise. Okay, please, any question? Then um, course reps, I don't know. I think we need to create a page for, uh, is it community media free on Telegram so that I'll be putting the slide and all those things there. For now, we don't know. We, <clears throat> I'll find out from the school, group A, your number. Because I know um, WhatsApp, um, Sister Dockers. Sister. What's up? What's up? Can you take about 500 students? Ask for 500, you can take, but more than 500, it won't be able. Okay, so I, I don't think the A, you are more than 500. Oh. You, initially, we were uh, for something, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know the number of January students, so I can't give the actual figure. Okay. Yes. All right, so um, you are 400 and something, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Okay, sister. General Rep. General Rep, what is your name? General Rep, are you online? Sir, please, I'm here. Yes. Okay, so Safwa, how many are you? I think we, we can take okay, cool. program. Uh, Marse and Koforija, I think we are about 160. 160. 160. Yes, please. Okay, so 560. Okay. So I think from here, I will create and add you. Then you send a link so that we can put our information just like we did last semester. But what about the, uh, uh, um, okay, I'll find out. I'll find out for, so you have, the I guess Koforidia will go to be, I'll find out. By a week today, I'll find out and then we look at the way forward. But let's create, because we don't have a link for the community midwifery. free. Uh, those who are leaving us, please wait or we have in close. We are coming to do an exercise. Okay, so we will create that. Let's pick questions and then we call it a day. The moment I say we call it a day, they will start leaving. We will do an exercise before we will leave so that they will stay. They won't leave us. Okay, so please, okay. any question? Can we... Hello? All right. Sadoki, so, are you asking the question? Please put up your hands if you have a question. Uh, is this a uh, new? Uh, how what is the? I'm looking for someone. Sophia, sister, are you in Kumasi Center? Koforidia. Uh huh. I thought you were in Tamale. I said, why are you with us? Okay. All right. So Anita. Sister. Hello, sister. Yes, dear. So the Pipirium group, are we to dissolve it? Because I thought you would change it to... Because I can't even find it. I sent you... I, when you said you should send your eye on it, I sent you that. But but now now we, we are having a different group now. So I don't think... Yes, so I thought that you changed the edit. Since we are, um, we are both... You are only, you are only are 100 and... You are only 100 and something. Let me see. You say you are 100 no. and what? We, 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 the others group, Koforidia, we are 80, 83. So we, we joined Kumasi, we joined Kumasi group. So I think that is what uh, made up the 400 and something uh, people. And uh, because you are Samoan. Yes, yeah, the group okay. comprises so of I think the page is a I don't see me myself. Uh -huh. No, I understand, but our old page, you know, let's dissolve it and create one, one page. Do you understand? Okay. Uh -huh. all right. So that we won't all be right. there. Then we go to the Telegram because that is where we can send the audios and then the videos there. Okay. You are the rep for Koforidia, I guess, right? Yes, please. Uh -huh. So that will make you, we will make all the reps group administration uh, administrator. Then we will create another rep page. Because the page has so many. So that I was looking for 
they pay to put the link and I don't know which one I should put it there. All right, Anita. Hello, sister, good morning. Good morning. Uh, sister, please, I'm concerned with the a double insurance and a double vagina you were talking about. That the lady said she didn't see and the, the next month she came. And I was worried about the oxytocin she gave. Won't it cause any problem to the other baby? And that is why uh, we are sending us back to Gaini. But you see, um, when you have di di for you trust, um, a double uterus and a double vagina. I don't know what that, let me check it. My formation, I'm coming, hold on. When you give the oxytocin, it's going to close from it. Because you see, sometimes, eh, that's why I don't want her to go into gyne, but sometimes when you have the di the dipro you trust or the malformations, you can be pregnant here and here. So you deliver one side and then the other side is still intact. Sometimes that pregnancy is not even due. Are you with me? I want to show you. Yes, yes sister. Yes, sister. Oh, my formation is not even due. Uh, of the uterus. Okay, I think I'm there. My formation of the uterus will be this one. Please, somebody is giving us a feedback at your end. Is it from Anita? Find my slide. And then, yes, sir. This this the die the die for you trust. All right, I think I wanted the image to show her her points. It's almost time. Please, I'm coming. All right, Anita, are you online? Yes, sister. I'm, I'm looking for. Okay, let me look at Gaini. Gaini. Oh. Laptop on this one, please. You. I'm looking for. I can find it. Okay, it's on it. Anita. Oh, Anita is offline. Sister, Anita. I'm, I'm there. Uh -huh. So have you seen the image? I'm projecting some slide. Are you seeing it? Yes, sir. Yes, sister. Uh -huh. So this pregnant here. Okay. You can get wow. pregnant at this side. Then Maybe in the course of the pregnancy, you will bleed from this side. Then you have sex during pregnancy. Then you get pregnant here. So the interval, sometimes it will not be the same. Other times, it will be the same interval. It's possible. Mm -hmm. the birth to twins, but they are not identical twins. So you can get pregnant here. And then maybe two months or four months later, you can get pregnant here. So you will delete. This one will be 10. And you deliver. The service they will dilate. And you deliver from here. Then within some few months, you will come back again and you come and deliver from this because this one too. Will... Great gestation. And you come and deliver from here. I think it's time. Mr. Isifu is calling. Ah. 
Uh -huh. Please, um, have I answered your question, Anita? I think it's time. Okay, Anita. sister. Sister. Have I answered your question? Sister, yes. Yes, please. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. Please, um, um, I want to sign out. Can I go? Any other question? Hello. Hi. Okay, Hi. if we don't have any other question, then I will see you next week. Midwives, save life. Save life. Okay, so to save meet life. again, take care of yourself. I will Let's communicate with the rep and then we will look at the way forward. Bye bye to everybody. Bye. 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 bye.